Well, happy Sunday, everyone. It is so good to be with you once again on our virtual um, church service, and we're so glad you tuned in and you're joining with us. We uh, want to be together as a church family as much as we can, and we find that this is the best way for us to stay connected during this difficult time. We want to let you know that Pastor Rick has been releasing a Tuesday Bible study. He started this past Tuesday, and he will continue on for the next two Tuesdays at least. So we want you to be sure to check out Facebook throughout the day and the church's website. Check back often so you can be blessed by Pastor Rick's encouraging words for us. We also want to let you know that we're going to continue with our Wednesday evening Bible study at 7 o'clock on Facebook Live. So join us when you, when you check in, say hi, let us know you're there, and we will be so glad to be with you on Wednesday evening. So that's Tuesday afternoon sometime, Pastor Rick's Bible study will be released, and 7 o'clock Wednesday Facebook Live. Well, church, we want to again thank you for your faithfulness in giving your tithes and your offerings each week. There are three ways to give. You probably know them as well as I do by now. We have an online giving. We have through the mail, and you can drop your tithe off in the mailbox outside the church office. But thank you for being a blessing to the Lord and a blessing to his church. We want to remind you to join us next week as we gather together for another virtual church service on Sunday with our worship team and another great word from Pastor Rick. Well, church, we also wanted to make you aware that New Hope Ministries is encouraging everyone who is affiliated with a church who supports New Hope Ministries in Littlestown. If you are having difficulties, if you need help with food or you need assistance during these most difficult times, please call the New Hope Ministry Center here in Littlestown. We're open every Wednesday from nine to four. The number is 717-698-3365 and press number seven to get connected to the Littlestown Center. Well, church, we do have a bit of sad news to tell you. We wanted to let you know that Peggy Selby, our sister in the Lord, passed away on Wednesday evening. And uh, we would ask that you would lift her family up in prayer. Jim, Tom, Sharon, and Linda, would you just hold them up in prayer as this has been a, a long journey for them and we wanna lift them up in prayer. We know Peggy is celebrating and dancing in heaven while our hearts are hurting and missing her, but lift her family in prayer and we would just um, love that so much. And so if you would bow your hearts with me right where you're at, we're gonna pray for Peggy's family. We're gonna pray over our offering and the word from Pastor Rick. So Father, we thank you for our time together. Although we're far away, we're still together. We're together through virtual means, but we're together in spirit, God, because we love you and we worship you and we come together as a family now, Lord Jesus, and we pray for Peggy Selby's family. We pray for Linda and Sharon and Tom and Jim. And God, we ask that you would bring them the peace of God that passes all understanding and the Holy Spirit would comfort them during this time of grief. And so, Lord, we just thank you now for our, the tithes and the offerings, Lord God, that your faithful people give. And so, Father, we just ask that you would use it to the betterment and the advancement of your kingdom for the advancement of your church in this community, God. And we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, church, God bless you. And please join in a time of worship with Tammy and the worship team. Good morning, Bethel. We are so excited that you can join us. Please enter in as we together worship our faithful God.
morning. We welcome you to Bethel Online. It's great to connect with you today, and we welcome those who are uh, here for the first time and uh, those who are rejoining us uh, online here today. It's great uh, to be able to spend time in the Word with you. I thank those who uh, have led us in uh, praise and worship for the beautiful music that has been shared, and and we are always grateful for, for anyone who uh, serves in any capacity to make things happen. I appreciate the techs. I appreciate those in the office who have worked hard to make things happen and all of the different people uh, and the moving parts that make Bethel work. Uh, what a blessing they are. This morning, I want to talk to you about soul health. And I, I'm going to begin by sharing a, a few highlights from a person's life that all of us know. Uh, his name is Abraham Lincoln, and we know him as the 16th president of the United States. Uh, we remember him for uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, and we think about the impact that he, he had on bringing a nation together, a divided nation uh, together. And uh, he is a profound component of our history here. He is a, a very important figure. And uh, yet when we look at Abraham Lincoln, we have to understand that this was a man who experienced a great deal of adversity in his life. And you know, it's interesting that most of the time people of great influence are people who have uh, walked through great adversity and have come out of it not merely as survivors, but thrivers. And Abraham Lincoln was that kind of person. At the uh, age of nine, his mother died, uh, his first love died when he was a young man, and later three of his four children died in childhood. His wife had uh, been affected by mental illness, and it is believed that Abraham Lincoln himself suffered from what would be called uh, clinical depression. His political path wasn't any easier. Uh, we know he had failure in the political arena prior to running for president. And, and we also know that when he ran for president that he uh, was uh, unpopular uh, in the eyes of many. Uh, the media portrayed him as a hapless hick from the backwoods, eastern 
uh, uh, society rejected him because they viewed him as an outsider uh, from the rough western frontier, being from Illinois. And when he ran for president, leaders in the southern state uh, communicated it very clearly that if Lincoln were elected, the country would divide. And we know that that was a, a threat that was made good on uh, when the, many of the southern states chose to secede and we were em embroiled in the Civil War. Uh, with 82% voter turnout uh, in the election of 1860, uh, Abraham Lincoln won with less than 40% of the popular vote. And, you know, yet he did not shrink away from uh, the mantle of leadership. He embraced it. You know, even knowing that he was uh, very uh, unpopular, that he was ridiculed, and he had endured great hardship, he uh, took the mantle of leadership that was placed upon him, and he served with integrity. And his popularity grew uh, until four years after he took office, and just six days after the uh, Confederate surrender, he was shot and killed in a final tragic note. But his life left an incredible legacy. Abraham Lincoln walked through adversity, and he came through it not as a survivor, but a thriver. And that, that really is a scriptural thought because the scriptures tell us that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. Paul said to the uh, uh, church in Thessalonica, he said, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless without, uh, or, or be preserved complete without blame at the coming of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. You know, as we read that, you know, Paul's prayer was that uh, the church would know the God of peace. And, uh, you know, that would be a prayer that, I would pray for the church today that we would know the God of peace uh, because we have to, to represent Jesus in this day. We are, we are gifted with the opportunity to be, an ambas to be ambassadors for Christ. And so we have to be people who walk in the peace of God. We, we ought to be characterized by the peace that surpasses understanding. Uh, we look at it, he prays that they would be sanctified or set apart and made useful to the Lord uh, spiritually, mentally, and physically, and that they would be mature so that as Christ comes, there would be no shame, but there would be rejoicing. So the scriptures also tell us in Isaiah 26, 3, uh, you will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And I pray today that we will know that perfect peace, that we will know that peace that surpasses understanding, that we would know the peace that Jesus said that he gives, the peace that's not the peace of the world, that fragile, uh, temporary, uh, unstable uh, peace that uh, is so easily broken. But God gives an indestructible, deep and abiding peace, and God wants you and I to know that. You know, our mind, as we, we look at it again, uh, our, our mind is really part of our, our soul. You have soul, spirit, and body. You have the soul, which is in, comprised of man's mind, his emotions, his feelings. Uh, the spirit is the, the, the deep part of us that uh, bears witness when we get saved because the Holy Spirit enters into us and bears witness with our spirit that we have become God's children. It is the part of us, the deep level uh, that connects with God, that has that vital union that affects our minds and the way we live our lives. But today I want to talk to you about your, your soul, which is comprised of your mind, your emotions, and your thoughts. And, and we pray today that you will be healthy, that your soul will be healthy today. And in order for that to happen, there are certain things that I think would be key. And I want to point out seven. And, and I'm going to start by talking about each of those uh, very briefly. Uh, perception. Uh, perception is the ability to see, hear, or to become aware of something through the senses. Hebrews 5.14 says, But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern uh, both good and evil. You know, we, we need to be able to see 
at a spiritual level. We need to be able to process those things mentally as the Holy Spirit helps us to. Because, you know, we we not only have to see things from a natural perspective, but we also have to, and most importantly, see the spiritual involvement and implications in any situation here. I pray that God will open our eyes that we can see with spiritual eyes, that we can hear with spiritual ears, uh, that we can become spiritually aware of things that as are needful for us. Because, you know, the, the things in the natural look one way, but when God opens our understanding to see things in the spiritual realm, things look entirely different. Because the Holy Spirit gives, gives us a view that it is a higher view. God sees the whole field. He sees all the dynamics, and he imparts and reveals counsel and wisdom and direction as, uh, as needed. And so we need to practice and we need to exercise those senses so that we can be discerning. The second thing is perspective, and perspective is a particular attitude toward or a way of regarding something. Uh, it's our point of view. You know, we form perspectives about things based on uh, on the way we gather information. You know, perception and perspective are related. You know, we see things and we form perspectives. And, you know, if we're going to perceive uh, Christ-exalting perspectives and we're going to allow our minds to be renewed, and that is the key, that regardless of what is happening around us, that our minds are being renewed so that our view of things is is as a Holy Spirit perspective. God, I pray for the church today that each of us will have a Holy Spirit perspective. You remember the church said it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit uh, when they were making critical decisions in the early church. Uh, you know, when we think about it, we have to know the mind of God, and we can through the Holy Spirit indwelling in us and counseling us and guiding us and bringing revelation, knowledge, and illumination illumination to us. Exodus 14, 13, uh, we look at Moses and he says to the people, do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see again no more forever. You know, sometimes uh, when we form a perspective, we it might be formed on incomplete un, uh, knowledge, and we form understandings that fall short of the real facts and the real picture. And so we need to have a perspective that is shaped uh, from the Word of God, from the counsel of God. Uh, a perspective that is it, it, that says, stand still, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, there were those who had formed the attitudes and, and their perspectives were that we need to go back to Egypt or else we're going to die here in this desert between uh, the armies uh, that are pursuing us and, and the Red Sea. And so that perspective would have led back to captivity and ultimately to death. We want to hold the perspectives that will lead us forward through the Red Sea because we have chosen by faith to stand still, knowing that God is at work regardless of what we might see. Thirdly, reflection. Reflection is serious thought or consideration. Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Uh, first uh, Peter 1.13 says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your mind on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. It, it, it says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober. People who are not able to think things through uh, are people at times who are intoxicated, inebriated, and the whole thought process is skewed and the picture is distorted. And so the, the capabilities of, of thinking things through are, are not there. The serious thought and consideration. Thinking about things from a Christian, a Christ given perspective, Holy Spirit perspective. Again, Peter says, therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you. You know, with sobriety and, and serious thought. 
you know, set your mind on the things of God. Uh, make it purposeful to do that. Introspection, the, the examination or observation of one's mental and emotional process. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine, uh, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. You know, uh, the psalmist prayed that God would, uh, would, would, would reveal to him the things that were in his heart. Uh, it would reveal anything that was ungodly that had taken hold in his life. And, and, and he believed that God would lead him forward. And, you know, as we look at this scripture here with Paul, he says, examine yourselves. You know, we constantly need, uh, not with condemnation, not with a, a, a victim mentality, just to examine ourselves in prayer, to listen to the counsel of God's word and the Holy Spirit, that we would examine what thoughts are being formed in my mind, what what attitudes, what behaviors are forming in my life? Are they God-glorifying? Uh, uh, are they Christ-exalting? Or are they out of alignment and in need of recalibration? God is so gracious to bring us back to that centered place in Him if we are willing to come back. Uh, fifthly, meditation. Meditation actually is thinking and mumbling and, and reciting things. Uh, you know, it's important for us, as the psalmist said, to be the tree that's planted by the waters, you know, that, that, that our leaves will not wither and that will be fruit bearing, you know, regardless of the season around us. As we meditate on the word of God, this is a great opportunity for the church to get into the scriptures, to get into the word of God, and to mind the or to mind the inspiration that God has purposed for the church uh, to be uh, furnished with, equipped with. The economy of heaven is not ever unhealthy. It's always super abundant, and God is always gracious to bestow what's needed. Meditate on the Lord. Focus your meditation on him. Recite the scriptures. Speak the scriptures back to you. Speak what God speaks into your life. Uh, the sixth uh, preparation, you know, the action or process of making ready or being made ready for use. You know, God is using this season to, to raise up something in your life and to raise you up for something. God is doing an incredible work of refinement, renewal, recalibration. God is uh, revitalizing the church here. We are not defeated, depleted. We are absolutely in the place where God is going to reveal himself, and he's going to do things that are preparing you and I for the things that lie ahead. This is not the last crisis that you will face, and God is preparing you to be that ambassador of Christ, to be that peacemaker, to be that child of God, that city that is placed upon a hill. Uh, you know, God is prepping you. So be open to learning. See what it is that God is wanting to teach you. You know, in, in this time, 1 Corinthians 9.27, uh, the Apostle Paul says, But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. God doesn't want you to be disqualified. He wants you to be his masterpiece, uh, to reveal his love and his grace to, to the nations. And the last thing is activation. God is leading us to the place where we are going to be active. You know, the Dead Sea is mineral rich. It's especially rich in salt. It contains such a high salt content that no fish or plant life live there. And uh, we know that that's because there are no outlets. A great volume of water pours into this area, but nothing flows out. Many inlets uh, plus no outlets equals a Dead Sea. You know, the church is not a Dead Sea. We are not survivors. We are thrivers. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us us. It's time to be busy. You know, the restrictions are placed on travel and where we go and such, but today we can still be active in our homes, in our neighborhoods, online, on the phone, uh, sending correspondence to people, uh, doing acts of kindness, you know, being faithful. I want to thank all of those uh, who uh, serve and provide essential services for people. We love you. We pray over you. And there are many of you who are out there serving the needs of people so that life can go on. I pray for Bethel. I pray for you today. And I believe that God's very, very best 
is being produced in this season of adversity and challenge. It is fertilizer for God's grace uh, to show his glory. And so today, as we think on these things, you know, God is using this time to make family stronger, spouse relationships stronger, parental relationships stronger, make your home a sanctuary, a place of prayer, a place of seeking God together, a place where you grow in the word together. Uh, God is, is deepening the wells of compassion in our lives so that others can draw from it the life-giving uh, water of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Lives. God is changing us. He is helping us to rethink things and see things differently. We are going to live in a very different world after this, and, and certainly God has awakened certain things in our spirit during this time, and hopefully we've learned something from it in, in the practical sense of how we do things and how we can do things and how God can move. And so today, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, it's the most important day of your life because you are given an opportunity uh, to accept him as your Savior. That means that you accept the fact that you have been a sinner, that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You believe that Jesus Christ came to this earth because God loved us. Uh, and he uh, took the most uh, extreme measure to redeem us from our sin. And so God wants to forgive us of our sins, clean the slate. He wants to give us new life. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and he changes us from the inside out. You know, you can't change the inside from the outside. It's what's in that changes the outside. It's what God does to affect change in, internally that makes the change outwardly. God loves you and he wants you to know no salvation. If you're a believer and you serve the Lord, this is not a time to hide. This is a time to shine. This is a time for you to step up, not to step back. You know, while we, we, uh, we know we have to do things that are common sense and practical, we are still people of faith who don't live in fear. And we believe that even in the day we live with the dynamics in place that are in place, that we can be the light of Christ. There's no restriction uh, that can keep uh, Jesus from being presented where God's people will step up and say, here I am, Lord, use me. So today, I pray for you. I pray, God, for this church. I pray for those who are serving people, uh, those who are shut in, Lord God, uh, those who are with families, those who live alone, those who are uh, altered, Lord, lifestyles are altered, those who are going through lean and hard times. Father, I pray that you would visit each household and release from your abundance into each need. And Father, you are faithful, and we thank you in Jesus' name for hearing and answering prayer. Today, God wants your soul to be healthy, and he wants you to know life eternal and to share it with others. Be blessed.